Hi there. Wanted to do a little demonstration on making comic book fonts. So when looking at a comic book font, what's really nice is kind of how expressive they are. What you've got is a bold font with a really interesting color scheme, some interesting detail like a, an extra double shadow or the font looks distorted. And I also like it when those comic book fonts are kind of merged. So you have like overlapping letters and the shapes are joined. Um, these are called onomatopoeias, uh, if you were wondering. Spell that three times fast. Um, they uh, basically are words that are spelled like they sound. And in comic books, they take it to the next level by actually illustrating them in a color scheme and a layout that that reminds you of what it is. So like the word boom is exploding and the word crunch is kind of slammed together and so on. Illustrator is the perfect program for making these types of word combinations. And so I want to show you a few tricks on how that's done. All right, so let's go over to our page and kind of start out. What we're going to do is use the type tool. And the first thing we want to do is decide what our onomatopoeia is going to be. I'm going to click. I'm just going to tap so that the font is going to pl get placed on my page on a line of type, not a text box, on a line of type. And what I'm going to do is just make up an onomatopoeia. I'm going to be really creative. Kaboom, exclamation point. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to, you know, increase the size really big. And uh, I'm going to look through my library of fonts. Um, by the way, if uh, you're looking for uh, downloadable uh, typefaces, um, I'll tell you a place that I like to get comic book fonts. A uh, little plug to uh, blambot.com. Uh, those guys are professional type designers and they do type for comic books. And uh, they have a lot that they distribute for free and others that are for sale, but they have a lot of really awesome high-end fonts. And so I like using them. But you can find fonts in other places. But if you're really looking for a, a nice, expressive comic book font, you want to go to one of those places to download it. So here, let's look through my little list. There's one, Crash Course, Crash Landing. Crash Landing looks kind of good. That's the one I'm going to use. Scale that up. And you can see how uh, the letters are already kind of squished. It's because I was doing something a little bit earlier, so the uh, the kerning is is off. But uh, yours may not look quite like this. In any case, we need to do some distortion. And I find the easiest way to do some distortion is to use the touch type tool. So what I'm going to do is leave my text selected, <clears throat> switch to the touch type tool, and then grab some of the letters and start making adjustments. Now, one of the things I've noticed with comic book fonts especially is what they're doing is they pick kind of the, um, what do you call it, the accent syllable to kind of make the word large. Like, is it going to be kaboom or is it going to be kaboom? Um, I think I'm going to do kaboom. So I'm going to make the K large. And uh, the closer together the letters gives you the, the feeling like that letter is, uh, you know, being read really fast. And so maybe each of these letters is going to get slightly larger until we get to the end. And again, the touch type tool makes this so easy to just kind of adjust and reposition the letters, letters as you go. And now I got to get the last one, exclamation point, maybe rotate it a little bit, push it back in. Uh, one thing that is important for this technique, uh, I believe, is that the letters touch. And you'll see why a little bit later. If the letters aren't touching and the phrase or the word is spread out, um, the outlines and the borders and the fill colors don't look quite as interesting. So I find that it's much better to, to make sure that they're all overlapping, especially for in the comic book world. 
like we're talking about here. Okay, I think I'm I'm done fiddling with this now. I guess I wasn't. Okay. So kind of got the font arranged the way the way I want it. Now I need to do some of those things like uh, the extra outline, the double outline, maybe a, a gradient or a drop shadow. And I prefer to do those as uh, duplicates, as um, double, double deep shapes, uh, other ways, and I'll kind of show you what that means. But the very first step is gonna be to join these letters together and to turn them into shapes. But before I do that, I need to make a copy. It's always a good idea when you're working in Illustrator to make copies of your originals so that if some, for some reason you need to get back to it, you can. So I'm gonna to change to my selection tool and I'm gonna move a copy of that text off the page and then I'm gonna go back to the, um, to the actual page and work on that. Uh, I think that's a really good practice to take your original text especially and throw it off the side of the page somewhere and then continue working on your copy. That way you have an original to get back to if you need to. There's nothing, nothing worse than getting down, a, uh, down to the end and then you realize, oh, I need to make an adjustment. And then if you've permanently altered your artwork or permanently outlined your text, then you're not able to go back and fix it. So make copies. So next step, once I've got my copy, I need to select the text. I'm gonna go to the type menu and I'm gonna say, uh, create outlines. Now I've converted all those uh, those little those little letters into shapes. Okay, so now I need to join them. You can see right now where these letters overlap. If I don't join them, this is what they're gonna they're gonna do when I put an outline on them. They're gonna stack. Okay, and they're not they're not gonna be joined in these overlapping spaces. I don't want it to be like that. I want them to actually connect. So what I'm gonna use for this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Shape Builder tool. If you look on the toolbar, there's a little double circle with an arrow on it. That's the Shape Builder tool. And if you haven't used the Shape Builder tool before, what it does is it adds shapes to other shapes, but it only adds where you click and drag with the cursor. So you wanna be careful and just like drag across a shape from one to the other. And you can do it a little bit by bit. You just drag and let go, drag and let go. Anywhere you see that these shapes should overlap one another, you drag and, and add. But what you don't wanna do is go too far. Like you don't wanna go into that circle and add that, right? So I'm gonna hit undo. You only wanna go as far as the shape that needs to be added and then Illustrator does the rest, joins them together. So there are other ways to do that. You could use the Pathfinder tool to do that too. Uh, probably Unite or Merge, but in this case, it's really easy. I'm just gonna use that Shape Builder tool and connect all those connections. And it looks like I found them all. So now I can go back to my selection arrow. And then look, if I did the, uh, the outline frame, now they're joined. There are no lines in between those shapes. That's my favorite uh, way to do that. Okay, now let's add some style. Um, let's go to swatches. I'm gonna go to the swatch palette. And I'm gonna click on one of the gradients, like that orange to red gradient. Um, I don't really like the direction that the gradient goes, so I'm gonna switch to the gradient tool click and drag and kind of reposition it. So maybe it's brighter at the bottom and goes red at the top. And that's just done by using that gradient tool to reposition the direction of the gradient. And now I just have a couple more things to do. I need to add the double outline and I need to add a drop shadow. And what I do to do that is I make duplicates and I overlap and stack those duplicates. 
you don't even know they're there, but they look like um, like uh, double double drawings. Um, so let's start with the double outline. If I increase the size of the stroke on the kaboom, so let's say I go here to the stroke and I increase it. See how it kind of overlaps the line and it kind of constricted the inside of the, the text and it even joined. It looks like it came together and the miter is off here, so it squared off that edge. Not really that great. I can fix that by forcing the stroke to go on the outside of the text. So I'm going to click on the stroke here, the stroke properties. And I want to make sure that my stroke is aligned to the outside of the object. See that? So that, that stroke line fits on the outside. And maybe that's a little too thick. I'll go down a step. Or I could go up, you know, whatever I want to do. Actually, I like that better. Eight point kind of worked on mine. Okay, and you see how that stroke line creates that extra oomph on that border? I dig that. Okay, now if I want to do a double uh, stroke, like if I want to have a thin white line visible, I'm going to have to actually duplicate the shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press copy, command C, and then I'm not going to hit command V, I'm going to go to the edit menu, and I'm going to use paste in front. Paste in front is going to make an exact duplicate right exactly on top of the other one. And you won't even notice it. If I hit paste in front, you won't even notice it's there. Oh. <laughs> Command C and then paste in front. Now we go. That's right. <laughs> so here we go. It it actually put that copy there. It didn't look like it, but it went right on top, so we didn't see it. Now to make that look like it has a double outline, I'm just gonna change the stroke color to white, and then I'm gonna reduce the stroke color so that the black shows through from underneath. See that? Okay, so now, now we're cooking. Now it's starting to look a little bit better. Now I need to make my shadowy shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another copy, but this time I'm just gonna do copy and paste. And I'm gonna change the coloring of this one. So I'm gonna click on my swatches and this copy I'm gonna turn into like a gray and I'm gonna change the stroke into a gray too. I'm gonna make that a gray. Um, I think that was the same gray color. And I'm gonna make it much thicker. Okay, and then what I wanna do is drag that until it's like offset a little bit from the, from the design like that. And I can right click and arrange send to back, or I can go to the object menu and do arrange send to back and put that shadowy shape underneath uh, the text and kind of drag it into position. So there you have it. I used my type tools. I used the type adjustment tools. And I made copies. I did separate colors and I even did a double frame on that puppy, a double stroke on that by uh, duplicating the, the stroke outline. All right, so that's a basic rundown of how you can make comic book type using Illustrator and good luck with yours.